Hello, welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question I'm going to be tackling is what's in the box in regards to this, something that many people in North America may not have seen. This is Aventuria, an adventure card game, so a cooperative card game in the vein of games like the Warhammer Adventure Card Game or the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game or numerous other adventure card games out there. So a role-playing game experience with multiple quests in a box card driven. This is based on the very popular German RPG Das Ard, otherwise known as The Dark Eye. So this is a game using that background and setting. In Germany, The Dark Eye is as big as Dungeons & Dragons. I have to thank Ulysses Spiel for sending me a review copy of this and being extremely generous in the amount of expansion content they also included. I have to admit, I know nothing about this game, except I know the setting is really cool. I have the Dark Eye um, in, in uh, the, the role-playing game. I will have to admit, I've never run it. Uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a typical fantasy setting with a little bit darker than D&D, but say not as grim dark as Warhammer. So this is a card game in that setting. I am really looking forward to seeing what's in this box. I know, again, I know nothing about this. I kind of got reached by Ulysses Spiel of the Blue, and they are like, hey, you want to check this out? And I'm like, sure, why not? So I'm going to crack the shrink on this. Then we're going to throw it down on the table and look at what you get in the box. All right, before we dump it, I'm going to read the back, actually, just to give people some background information, because most people are probably like me and don't know the background. For some unknown reason, the undead were focusing their attacks on Coralon, trying to pull him down into their cold graves. Do something, the half-elf shouted at his companions, while dodging boldly left and right. Despite his nimbleness, the skeletons landed several hits and tore his quilted surcoat to pieces. And then he heard Arbosh roar in triumph. By the ancestors, now we can begin! The dwarf took one more gulp from his ale pot and raised his massive ox head. Oxherd? Oxherd. I don't know what an oxherd is. The three steel balls cut through the air with a loud buzz and pulverized one of the skeletons into a puff of bone dust. Sounds like an oxherd is rather powerful morning star. Gear up for battle. Aventuria is a place where danger lurks behind every corner. You'll face vicious monsters, exciting adventures, and even ill-tempered companions suddenly challenging you to a duel. Collect weapons, armor, and magic spells, learn special talents and unique abilities, and surprise your opponents with unexpected tricks. Aventuri is a fast-paced card game for one to four players, ages 14 and up. Each player takes control of a hero of Aventuria, the grim dwarven smith Arbosh, the nimble elven scout Lirarniel, the cunning half-elf rogue Carolyn, or the mysterious Talmidian mage Mirabon. Fight against each other in dual mode or band together in the cooperative adventure mode. So that's an interesting thing right there. Dual mode where you can fight each other or in adventure mode. In adventure mode, overcome challenging adventures as a group. Your action cards give you the tools you need to fight dangerous villains or your fellow heroes. But be careful. Every turn, you must make careful tactical decisions to react to your foe's actions. And I gotta say, that's a lot of neat flavor text that told me almost nothing about the game except for the fact it can be played in dual mode. Or adventure mode. That's all that tells me. I know nothing about any of the mechanics in here still. So let's take a look at what's in the box and see if we can figure something out. Alrighty, we are going to take a look inside this box. It's my first time looking in here. I don't even know what's in here except they expect some cards. Alright, we have... I like that. Please read dual rules first. So one of the things I noted while looking at the back of the box is this game features two different modes of play. Dual mode where the players are playing against each other and adventure mode where they're working together to complete quests. It notes to read the dual rules first. These are the adventure rules. I gotta ask whoever's packaging the box, why wouldn't you put that first? There, that's how this game should have been packaged. Please use this book first. Anyway, simple mistake. Not gonna complain about that. Not overly thick. Um, for an adventure card game, this could have been like Pathfinder and been like a 50-page book. Um, we have the dual rules. We have the game materials. Cards look like a lot of text on them, uh, as to be expected. I like that they're showing me the back of the cards and what to expect. Looks like there's going to be some counters and dice in here, too. We have action cards look a little different. You have different kinds of action cards, so summarizing them. I love the amount of um, detail here. Check this out. Life point card. This looks neat. Uh, let's see if I can get 
you a better shot of this. This kind of reminds me of scorekeeping in Euchre. You have two cards that you're going to use combined to keep track of your hit points. You could use something like that for Star Realms. Or, say, Magic the Gathering. So that looks cool. Uh, we have game have preparation. Picking your starting heroes. I see lots of examples. Three column text. It's nice and big text. Nice dark text. Sorry, I should hold this up a bit. Not a lot of artwork in here, but the artwork that's in there is solid. Doesn't look overly complicated. We are looking at... Oh, the pages aren't numbered. We'll count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pages to get to the end of the game. And like one of those was just how to use light point cards, and I'm going to guess a glossary. Oh, so how to play multiplayer, how to build decks ahead of time, and then an FAQ, questions and answers. Looks good. Looks well organized. Um, advanced mode FAQ. Um, this is the second edition, so the second printing of the game, so there were some changes from the original. And then there are the four characters included in this box. Trust me, there are a lot more characters and a lot more expansions out there besides this. Oh, and then a nice summary on the back. So far, looking good. We're going to grab the Aventuria Adventure Rules there. That's more what I was expecting. This is a little thicker. This, this is a chunk of a book. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a chunk of a book. That, uh, that is not a small small booklet. Um, maybe it's got the adventure in it, though. Maybe it's not just rules. Well, let's find out. The the Dark Eye and Adventuria. So there's an introduction to the Dark Eye setting. Um, the world map that I recognize. I have a big poster map version of this, actually, from one of the Dark Eye settings. Uh, we're still just getting into background here. We're into money and ceremony. So you got a lot of detail here to get people involved in the setting. Then we get to the actual adventure rules. Looks like a lot more card types are used for this mode of play. Uh, you've got a board we're going to be using. You've got the adventure. It looks like there might be some difficulty levels. Again, we got the the what a leader card looks like, what a story card looks like. We hadn't seen those before. What a special card looks like. So you got at least three new types of card types using this. Um, it looks like you're going to have cards that are um, landscape as well as portrait. The artwork I'm seeing here looks pretty good, but I'll see it better. End of combat, brief respite, and that's it. And then a short adventure, so additional rules. So, again, I'm going to count these quick. Pass, getting rid of the fluff. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pages of rules for the adventure. That's not bad. For an adventure card game, that seems, uh, I wouldn't say simple, but definitely on the easier side than, say, the Pathfinder game. Uh, so then we have a short adventure in the, the starter box. Again, I don't know what the... So green is a critical success. Lighter green is a success. Uh, orange is a failure. And red is a critical failure. So it looks like you have multiple results depending on how well you do in each section. Um, so these are two different adventures. Okay, so you have multiple short adventures. Saving Silvana is one adventure. We have the gambling kind. The non-gambling kind. Sorry. Legacy of Wildenstein. That one's longer. It's got three acts. And then, oh, we have a character. So we have a, a form of character sheet here. So the stuff listed off here is uh, body control, craft, knowledge, perception, persuade, stealth, survival, and willpower. Which I think are the same as in the Dark Eye. It's been too long since I've read it. I apologize. And then a little glossary of symbols. And then the combat, combat sequence. So far, looking good. Looking very good. Oh, ouch. Okay, here's a knock against it. That is a thin player board. That, that is basically a piece of poster. Like, this is something I hang on my wall, not something I play a game on. Though, to be honest, it's a board for holding cards. So I guess I can't fault it that much, but being a board game fan, uh, more than a card game fan, not that I don't like card games, I prefer my nice mounted boards. That's a little flimsy. That's uh, This is the first disappointment. But again, to be honest, not a big deal. What you do, I would assume most people would probably do, is replace this with a um, neoprene mat for playing cards on. So it looks like you got spots for monsters. Um, you got monsters with laurels. I'd have to assume boss monsters. You got, I have no idea, some wheel symbol. This has like a monster deck symbol. This shows the tap symbol and then A and A. No, no clue. Single sided, and again, this is like poster board. Punch boards. So the company does know how to make punch boards, because here is one. Uh, we got a bunch of skull tokens. We have some way to track health. 
These very much look like poker chips, so I'm guessing that there's probably some type of Fate or Benny system. These were obviously the four heroes. Um, then you have that A thing again. Two-sided. Um, oh, that's interesting. So these are time tokens on this side, and they're skull tokens on that side. And then we have a bunch of, I don't know, like attack bonus or something, a couple more A's. We'll throw some of this over here so you can kind of see it up close. The other side's definitely more interesting. You can see the artwork. I'm impressed by the artwork. It's it's fantasy artwork. It's not overly distinctive. Uh, these have a blue background. That's what you can't see here. Then we have packs of cards and a very disappointing box insert. How do I organize cards in this? I gotta ask. Like, especially once I cut the shrink wrap on these. That's a little disappointing. Just anything to, to sort these, divide this, hold these. I don't know if they expect you to not keep the box and put these into like magic card holders, third party holders that you pay someone else money for. All right, we're going to look at the dice though first, then we'll look up a couple packs of these cards. The dice I like, I got to say, these are neat dice. So what we have is a standard D20 and what looks like a standard D6 until you get to the six which I'm not going to be able to find here, which has the dark eye symbol on it. It is odd to see a pipped D6 in an RPG. Usually RPGs stick with numbered dice. So what you actually have is four of these, because you can play four players. So there are four D20s and four D6. Again, the D6s are special, with the six showing the dark eye symbol. Which don't make the same mistake I've made talking about this game and call it the Lidless Eye. That's something else owned under license by a whole different company. Alright, cards. I am I am loath to open these because how am I going to put them back in the box? Oh, the D20 has a dark eye too. Thank you very much. Chat room here on Twitch. You're right. There we go. The 20 has a dark eye as well. On the 1, not on the 20. So I'm wondering if the dark eye is a bad thing. And sixes are bad. Good catch. Thank you. All right. I'm going to open these up, but I I'm, I'm, might not put this box away when we're done because I'm worried the cards are going to get damaged. All right. So there is um, the pull off, which is a nice touch. All right. I All the backs, all the cards same? No. Okay. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. So, so card back looks pretty typical. And then we have an axe. It has a number in the corner. There's definitely some iconography going on. It looks like if you tap it, I know you're not supposed to use that turn, crank it, whatever, turn it 90 degrees, you're going to attack with a D6 plus 4. And then there's some flavor text at the bottom. It's art. <laughs> it's an axe. Uh, there is a symbol. I'm going to guess a set symbol. No, it's a, there's credits. It shows it's a weapon card down in this corner. So there's a weapon card. This is the Iron Forest Crossbow. Looks similar. Uh, the artwork's kind of dark. Here's an armor. Then we get to an actual hero card. So these are two-sided. You got them. Um, I'd have to assume that's your dwarf. I don't know. Is there a difference between these two sides? 14, 10, 0. 14, 10, 0. My eyes are not good enough for games like this. Basic equipment knight. No, they are different. Okay, so I don't know what the difference is between the, the two sides, like what it means. But this, I'm going to guess, like the low-level version. And then this is the high-level version because he has more abilities. Uh, card quality is really nice. Um, I don't know if we can get the... Yeah, you can see it there. Look at the linen finish on that. Nice linen finish on the cards. You're probably going to want to sleeve them. So here is a chance encounter card. It says time scale legendary says, start with six time, five or four time, draw a new henchman card and place it to the right of other opponents. Three time, every opponent heals himself five. Two time, draw one new henchman card. Zero time on their next turn, all opponents get plus one. So there's a whole timing element where things are going to escalate as the combat goes on. That's pretty cool. The other side of this is different, actually. It's, uh, it says time scale difficult instead of legendary. So that's neat. Um, and they're different. So here's a different one too. It's not like these are always the same. So this is time scale normal and time scale easy. So depending on the difficulty level of what you're fighting, how much time you have is going to matter. So then we have cards specific to each, uh, different adventures. So if you look here, these all say Widerstein, 
one, two, three. I don't want to spoil anything here. So let's just grab all the Wittersteins. And we're going to go through this quick enough that it won't spoil anything. Sound good? All right. So you got like a character here. You got some of those time cards. You got something with a bunch of different stuff on here and an NPC in the corner. We got more time scale, time scale, time scale. So these are all different separate encounters with different things happening as time goes on. Then we have, it looks like some artifacts or stuff you can find. Oh, there's four of them, five of them. There's a bunch of them. I don't know what those are. Then we have more time scales. You have an open coffer with some options there in the card. You got, this actually says foreshadowing. Then we have another NPC. So these are NPCs. And then we have a special hero action. So there you go. Really quickly. I don't think anyone got spoiled there. So chance encounter must be the name of a scenario. It's not its own thing. Uh, then we have, I remember Saving Silvana being one of the adventures. We have a bunch of cards for Saving Silvana. Then I have Aventuria Demon Abilities. Oh, no, they're labeled different things. Demon Abilities. So we have three different Demon Abilities, which is just at this point a block of text. Um, most of that is flavor text. So you have flavor text in brown and mechanics below. Then we have a pile of leader actions. Again, big chunk of flavor text followed by mechanics. And there's a selection of these. And these are all different. So like one leader action might be strengthen. We'll move this out of here. We have inventory events. So we have a deck of events here. Again, lots of flavor text. Way more flavor text than I'm used to seeing in one of these games. This is going to be much more of a storytelling game, I think, than most of the adventure card games I've seen. There's a lot more going on as far as flavor text. So that was just one deck. And at this point, I think we're going to open another. Because we didn't even see any of the cards that are horizontal. Again, opening up really easily. It's a nice bonus. So next, I have a bunch of henchman cards here. There we go. Bunch of henchman cards. Okay, henchman cards definitely go sideways. you got like the character stats on the side. You've got artwork for the card. Uh, this says it's a mean highwayman. Oh, we have a bunch of mean highwaymen, so I'm not sure why there's multiples. Crossbowmen. And so on. We have a bunch of different encounters with different people. We're going to toss those in a corner of the box. Now we have a bunch more cards that just say Aventuria on them. Oh, so we're into more items, it looks like. So we've got rapiers and throwing knives and quilted surcoats and weapon poison. Nasty stuff. Uh, now these have some red backgrounds. These look like treasure hunt. I don't know why that's a different background. Healing potion. Danger sense. Maybe these are skills. Self-sacrifice. I am not going to go through all of these. We're just going to throw some down. Anatomy, Warfare, Protective Amulet, Vigilance, Pickpocket, Foul Play, Dirk, a whole bunch of Aventuria cards. Which leads us next to a two-sided, must be some kind of NPC, because I don't recognize that as one of the characters. Oh, is that? That is one of the characters. All right. So this is one of the characters. Again, two-sided card with more abilities on one side. All right, I honestly don't know what I have here. Trembling, Trembling Grave. So I don't know what these are, <laughs> honestly. They say Trembling Grave on them. And then I have more Aventuria cards. At this point, no, I do see new types. I was going to say, I, think I might stop if I don't see something new on this deck. But there it is. Bonus points, freeze it open. So practice. We have practice cards. Practice makes perfect. After rolling a die for a skill test. Okay, so it's like you gain the ability to practice. I thought it might be like some how to play. Uh, then we have more of the, the non-gambling kind adventure cards. We showed off some of those earlier. We have another henchman. I'm going to hate myself if these were supposed to be kept in any particular order. We have the uh, the euchre, the health cards we were looking at in the rule book there. 
I'll admit I didn't quite look up how to use them or else I'd show it off. So we have our health cards there. We had a whole bunch more henchmen. Look at them all. These are all henchmen. Piles and piles of henchmen. That was that deck. Two more decks. At this point, we're doing them all. There it is. All right. Aventria cards, which should be able to make like items and skills. That's what we determined earlier. Let's see. Yep, magical aptitude, sleight of hand, short bows, and so on. A whole bunch more Aventuria cards. Then we have another one of the heroes, or all of the heroes. So different type of card for each of the heroes here. I think this is telling you how to build their decks. So what this says is allowed action cards for this hero. So it's it's a the, the hero card and then a list of the allowed action cards. Which that part again reminds me of the Pathfinder. Um, as well as their skill ratings on the back. So there's a number of different skills the character has. So we have that for the different characters. There's the fourth character. Then we have more Aventuria cards. Some more of those training cards. One more deck. Oh, am I right? It is all of... Oh, except the last hero card. All the rest of this is Aventuria cards. So what I am going to do quickly here is show off this stack. That is not a small amount of cards. So I gotta say, Ulysses Spiel, what do I do with them now? Where do these go that I don't make a huge mess? Like this is just gonna get destroyed. So I'm gonna put this like this and put this back on top and not store this box on its side. Overall, looks pretty good. Um, only just seeing the components. Components are top notch, except for this poster board board. That's a little lame. I think if I like this game, it might be worth looking for a neoprene sheet because that's easier to pick up cards anyway. Glossy, too. That's going to be bad for my pot lights downstairs. Rule books look clear. Um, two different games here. You've got a solo game and a, or sorry, not a solo, a PvP or a cooperative game. you got three adventures in one box with four heroes. All right, there you have what's in the box for Aventuria, the Dark Eye. The only thing that I am... There's two things in this box I wasn't impressed by. One, the fact I just stood it up and heard all of my cards slide to the bottom of the box because there is no box insert, just a trough. That's that's heinous for a, a collectible card game. Give me some way to control my cards, please. Baggies to put them in, dividers, some way to control the cards. So I have a feeling this is going to be a mess to set up the first time I go to play it. Um, other disappointment is there's a player board when I'm playing the Avenger thing, and it's literally made a poster board. That was a little disappointing. I would have liked a mounted board. Other than that, everything looks great. Um, looks simpler than some adventure card games I've played and more complicated than other card games I've played. There are two separate rule books in here. It says to learn the dueling game first, which is a player versus player game, then move on to the adventure game. For the adventure game, there were three or four short adventures. I forget exactly which. Uh, one that was actually like a longer campaign three-part. Looking at the cards, what I did see is a lot of flavor text. It looks like there's going to be a lot more story than I'm used to for these games. For example, the other games I played, you kind of read the intro to the adventure, then you play a very mechanical card game to see if you've won, and then you go back to the adventure book to see what happened. This looks like there's a lot more narration going to happen during the game, which, as a role player, that's a big thumbs up. That looks really cool. That looks like it's going to be very engaging. As for mechanics, I haven't played the game yet. We'll have to uh, see what happens once I get this to the table. So I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Or just head to TabletopBellhop.com. That is our hub, our main webpage, and my blog, where you'll find all kinds of things like unboxing videos, reviews, and answers to your gaming questions. If you've got a gaming night question for me, head over to Tabletop Bellhop, click on Ask the Bellhop, or send me an email, mo at TabletopBellhop.com. So now we got to see what's in the box for Aventuria. Before you're sure to come back, hit that subscribe button so you find out when I play it and I can let you know how this game turns out and, well, how mixed up my cards are now that I've tipped the box multiple ways.
For a Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, I am Motuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.